We now begin chapter 46, the breaststroke kick subroutines, pairing up visual, verbal, and kinesthetic cues. We'll start with step 231. Make a V with your feet like seal flippers. Sit on the pool edge, a chair or bench, and lean back with your legs together. Point your toes, then flex your ankles to make a V with your feet. Your heels touch at the bottom. To condition this ankle flexion subroutine, go from a toe point into the V and return four to five times. On the last flexion, hold the V until you feel the muscle tension on the outside of your lower leg start to get tired. This is an important kinesthetic feeling cue. When you are on your stomach, in the water, and unable to see your feet, you will know by feel if you're in the correct position for each ankle by how your muscle feels in your lower leg. Step 232. Do a leg drive with your legs together up and back like a piston and your feet in the V. This is the dominant action of your kick. When kids jump up in basketball, they do not start with their legs spread apart. Their feet are directly underneath their hips to drive downward to go upward. In this kick, you have the same dominant action to bring your legs up and shoot them back hard to get maximum propulsion to go forward. Don't rotate your heels out yet. You only want to condition this dominant motor pattern first. It serves no purpose to shoot your legs outward, outside of the midline, and create excessive resistance to your forward movement. The inner border of your foot will not slide through the water to create lift under the bottom of your foot to propel you forward. Bring your knees and heels up equally outside the midline like you would squat down and keep your balance. To keep your knees or heels up more creates too much resistance. Keep your heels just below the surface of the water. As you draw your legs up, form the V, flexing your ankles so that your toes point up towards your kneecaps. Keep your legs together and your feet flexed up in the V and do four to five up and back motions, pausing at the end of your thrust back each time to condition this piston-like leg drive action. Step 233. Spread your heels to rotate apart and back together from your lower leg, keeping your knees up together and feet in the V. With your legs up, feet in the V, and your toes pointing up towards your kneecaps, spread only your heels 12 to 18 inches apart and back together again. Condition this lower leg rotation out and back from your knee. In technical terms, this is medial rotation of your femur. Do this five to six times pausing when your heels are fully rotated apart. You will start to feel muscle tension in your hip rotator muscles to know you are doing it correctly. Condition this feeling to know it when you are floating before you fire your kick backward in the piston action. Step 234. We're now going to chain the three subroutines together in the neutral face float position. Sit and lean back on the pool edge. In sequence, make your V and bring your legs up, do your spread and hold. Make a mental movie of your entire pattern and remember how your muscles feel as you do each subroutine in the sequence. When you kick, drive your heels straight back like in the piston step. See that your legs come together automatically in a face float glide position. For any part of your legs, little time is spent outside of the streamlined, midline body position while floating. This reduces resistance and increases your efficiency. In the old way, people were told to kick their legs wide and squeeze them together. Can you imagine the zero thrust you get from moving two logs together? Or jumping up with your legs already spread apart? Later you will transfer these identical elements to do in your face float position in sequence. Your feedback will be to feel the thrust and see if your body moves forward. If correct, you will move significantly to teach yourself. 